Welcome back to TV5 News at 9. It's time now for Aging in Style with American Retirement Advisors. So joining us this morning is owner Joe Vitale. All right, Joe, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. You're welcome. Good morning, Sarah. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Doing great. Good. All right, Joe, so you're always here giving us the most important information on retirement. But if you at home want to hear more from Joe, be sure to grab your phones and scan the QR code on your screen uh, to subscribe to his newsletter, Financial Vitals. That's where you can stay tuned to the latest financial news and market updates. All right, so Joe, let's go ahead and jump straight into our topic today, which is retirement and Social Security. So there's a lot of talk right now about the correct age to file for Social Security. So is age 70 really the right time, even though someone uh, may have retired at an earlier age? Yeah, it's a great question. A lot of people say, oh my gosh, we have to, you're going to get the most at age 70. You have to wait till that time and make sure, you know, it all depends. That's the correct answer. It all depends on your situation. Uh, the truth of the matter is, yes, you know, we did get an eight and a half percent over eight and a half percent increase with Social Security last year. And the longer you wait, the more it ramps up, up to age 70, and then it stops at that point. Uh, so yeah, it's a great guarantee roll up. So a lot of times it does make sense to wait till age 70, but every situation is different. What are the ages of you and your spouse? What, what age are you gonna retire? What we do is we do a social security maximization strategy for everyone. That lets you know the optimal way to retire, but there's still more. You can't just go with that. That's super easy to do. Say, so, oh, this tells me the best way to file for social security. I'll get the most in my lifetime. Okay, but now let's plug it into your unique situation because everybody has a different earning situation. If there's income, there's a pension. If they need how much money per month, how much savings do they have? When do they retire? So we look at the macro approach. We look at the next 30, 40 years down the road. Um, what is the best, you know, how much are we gonna drag off of your savings in order to wait for social security? Is there a pension? Does it make sense? So I can't say that for everybody, I mean, yes, everybody's situation, the longer you wait, the more you will inevitably get if you live a long life. Uh, but everybody's situation is totally different and it's unique to everyone. So that's why we wanna see that, how it works in their unique roadmap to see the best place for them. All right, Joe, thank you. So the next part is gonna be about income and retirement. So do people still get pensions from their employers or should they take the lump sum options that may be offered instead? Yeah, you know, we're seeing uh, pensions go away, even with the big three, which had them for years and years and years. And, and some, of course, uh, some of our, our clients and some people still get pensions, and that's a beautiful blessing. Uh, but we're seeing them go away. Um, but for those who do get them, the lump sum option is great because you get control of it at that point. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry, should you or your spouse pass away early, uh, your, your family would get the remainder. Um, but unfortunately, with the interest rates that went up in the last year, we saw pensions of uh, the lump sum payout get reduced by over 20% in a lot of cases. Um, so every again, every case is different. If you do have that option of a lump sum, let's do the math. Let's see the best strategy for you. Um, sometimes uh, it is it might be better to take the pension, and we look at that situation to make sure. But we're not seeing a lot of pensions out there anymore. But there still are some, so it's definitely worth a look. So Joe, tell me, uh, you know. Are there other ways to provide some guaranteed income in retirement that's similar to a pension without having to worry about a risk? Yeah, it's a great question because, you know, a lot of times when you're in the market, you really can't guarantee anything. Uh, but what is a pension? Basically, what is Social Security? It basically is an annuity. Uh, just like with General Motors, um, when they, you know, basically Prudential took over, Prudential Insurance Company took over their pension. So you can build your own pension, your own, uh, your, 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 I like that mailbox money, right, where it comes in every two weeks you get a check or every month you get a check. You can build your own. There are guarantees. You can get a 7 8%, 10% guaranteed roll-up, guaranteed. You can't say that in the market, but with fixed or fixed index annuities, those are guaranteed. And you can get a 10% or an 8% guaranteed roll-up um, for income. And some. so what we do is everybody likes to say, oh, my gosh, look at how big this great guarantee roll-up is. We like to have, we have this genius that we do, and we can find out what the best payer is, again, for everybody's situation. Everybody has their own sweet spot. Every company does. So I like to take a piece of the retirement, not the whole thing, but a piece of it, 
and put it into that. So we've got that money guaranteed. So we've got that reoccurring income coming in for sleep at night insurance for peace of mind and no worries that income's coming in. Um, and yeah, we, depending on their age and when they're turning on income, there's a, a bunch of different companies and everybody has their own sweet spot. So I like to look at the top 20 companies and find the best one for, for our clients. Mm -hmm. So Joel, you know, if you're taking a safe or low risk approach in retirement, what are some options that are available that mm -hmm. still give you a good rate of return uh, besides, you know, just keeping money in the bank? Yeah, you know, there's everybody used to have oh, bonds, 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 mm -hmm. bonds are our, our savior. The bonds are not. Now, there is a place for bonds. Let me say that. I like to have some bonds in the portfolio for sure. Um, but I think last year was proof that, you know, too many people were heavily weighted in bonds. And as a result, the portfolios got hit pretty hard and they were supposed to be the safe haven. Uh, so it's good to have some of that. But again, we're going to go back to, uh, I think, a place is to have some fixed or fixed index annuities. You can get a guaranteed 5% rate right now. I mean, 5% plus, actually. Um, so, so you talk about safety. You talk, And there's still liquidity where some people are going into CDs, which is fine, but you have no liquidity in that. You know, your year, two, three, five years, where a lot of these fixed or fixed index annuities, you can get 10% or 5% out per year. So they have liquidity. They have guarantees. They have safety. They have peace of mind. Perfect to a retirement. You know what, Joe, was interesting is you brought up CD accounts, and I was just about to ask you about those. So CD accounts, uh, do you recommend them for people who are, you know, trying to put some money away, who are mm -hmm. thinking about retire retiring or already retired? How do you feel about that? You know, I'm not opposed. I mean, we don't do CDs, uh, but the one thing with CDs, especially if you go with the short term, sometimes a lot of my clients say, Joe, I need this money in one year. Now, we have a kind of a money market account, which is paying 3.5%, which is not a bad rate. Um, but I say, my, Joe, my, my, my bank's giving me 45 uh, on a one-year CD. Hey, that's great. That's absolutely great. You want to do some laddering, you can do that. You want to, you know, we have found that sometimes the CDs, you are paying tax on those every year, mm -hmm. whether you use the money or not. Sometimes annuities, if you don't need the money, they do grow tax deferred. Um, so that's another benefit of that. And we're finding some better rates. So it's not, not a bad idea to have some short-term CDs. I like that for a short term, maybe six months to a year. Mm. Uh, but over that, there are some better options, I think. All right, Joe, thanks for breaking down that pro and con. That's, mm. Those were some really good points. So is, is having risk in the stock market okay when you're retired? Mm -hmm. And if you are taking a risk, how much of a risk should you actually take? You know, what, what we do with our clients, we do what's called a color of money risk analysis. So we like to see, we have to see what their risk uh, stomach is, I guess. And uh, we can't really, as a fiduciary, um, recommend things that are contrary to their risk tolerance. One of my clients told me when she retired, she said, I says, you know, how much are you comfortable losing if the market goes down? She said, Joe, I better never lose a penny. I said, well, you can't go in the stock market at that point, okay? You have no stomach for risk at all. So if that's the case, can't put them in the market. Mm. Um, but a lot of people say, you know, we're looking at that, say we could put 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60% in the market. Now, the one thing is, is you're going to see like last year when we have market risk, we're going to have 10 to 30% down, you know, backside in the market. That's okay if you are positioned for that. You should have some growth money. Uh, what we're what we're recommending right now is, especially depending on the clients, I love to have money in good blue chip dividend paying growth stocks. So stocks are great. Um, depending on the company, we, you know, our actively managed portfolios, they like to look at they they do active management. Our professional money managers. So we have a, a testing that we have to do for these portfolios that they have to meet strict guidelines. But it's good to have those companies that can pay good reoccurring dividends. So you do have some money coming in if you need that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do want to have some money geared for growth, again, if you have the tolerance for that. Um, and if, if so, there's definitely a place for those, especially for long-term growth. All right, Joe, thank you so much. Is there anything else that you want to add? You know what? It's, it's like anything. We don't know what's going to happen with the market. Uh, there's a lot of turmoil right now. We're seeing some earnings reports coming back week. Um, there's still a lot of strong job numbers. Um, so we're not sure we might see, of course, the downturn and we're starting to see some weakening here and there. Yeah. Uh, but we have to keep our heads. We've seen this before. We've been through it before. And as long as we're positioned properly, we can make it through, you know, our clients can make it through retirement without a lot of worry because we've got safe money, growth money, income money, just proper positioning. Um, and making sure we're taking advantage of tax strategies. So, yeah, there's a lot of great strategies to do right now. All right, Joe, thank you so much. Uh, safe money, growth money, 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 right? 
That's right. You got it. <laughs> All right, Joe. We always love having you on. All right, so for the latest financial news and market updates, be sure to subscribe to Joe's newsletter, uh, Financial Vitals. And if you want more information on today's topic, head on over to Aging and Style. That's on our website, WNAM.com.